The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Good afternoon. My name is Ron Tuckett. Welcome to the program on this Bastille Day. July 14th, 20th and 22th. We've reached Saturday, August 24th, 1985. We're right down to brass tacks. The last week of August coming up in this replay. And then it's September, which if you ask your speaker device to play Earth, Wind, and Fire September, you can dance around while and look even more silly than whatever this replay will do. So today we go back to Anaheim for the California Angels and the Detroit Tigers. The Angels are 64 and 58. They are a game and a half behind the Kansas City Royals, which should be a battle royale for the American League West all through the month. The Tigers have a better record. They're 66 and 55. This is game 122 for them, 123 for the Angels. However, the Tigers are sitting seven games back of the uh, in the melee in the American League East between the Blue Jays, Red Sox, Yankees, and Baltimore Orioles. The Tigers are ahead of the Orioles, but behind the other three. So for the Tigers, this really is a must-win game. And if you got someone that needs to pitch to the score, well, Jack Morris is your man. And in fact, Jack Morris is on the hill for the Tigers. UVM's own Kirk McCaskill gets a call for the Angels on a Chamber of Commerce Day in Southern California. How nice do you want it? As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Replay 1985. Today, from Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California, it's the California Angels and the Detroit Tigers. And today's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web. For your sports simulation and replay needs find us today on spotify spreaker itunes and wherever else find podcasts or listen how you doing matt steeler fan got a question for you buddy so it'll be mccaskill who had 24 decisions in real life only has 12 so far on the replay but he's pitched better mccaskill five and seven with an earned run average of 392. He is making his 22nd start of the year. He has seven left, including today. McCaskill, who was a hockey player at the University of Vermont, 24 years old, fastball pitcher at 88, and a standard pitcher, making his third start against the Tigers, and he's owned them. 16 and a third innings, eight hits, one unearned run. He walked four while striking out 13, 1-0, and, oh, and an earned run average of zero. His last start came five days ago against the Oakland A's, a 3-2 win. He went nine innings, but did not get a decision. 133 pitches, four hits, two runs, one earn, no homers. He walked two and struck out three. By the way, on May 21st, he too hit the Tigers 2-0, walking three and striking out six. Overall, for Kirk, 149 in the third innings, 146 hits, 72 runs, 65 of those earned, 17 homers, 44 walks, and 81 strikeouts. And this will be the lineup you'll face. Lou Whittaker leads off for the Tigers at second base. Alan Trammell bat second and plays short. Kirk Gibson in right hits third. Lance Parrish cleans up behind the plate. I'm on the road. The steam is a little choppy. Well, if you're driving, I don't want to ask you a question. But I'm kind of curious. I'll ask this anyway. And if you don't answer it today, that's fine. How can someone who grew up in Ohio and live in Houston, especially in the Love You Blue era, be a Steeler fan? I'm just kind of curious at that. Darrell Evans at first will bat fifth. Simmons, the DH, will go sixth. Larry Herndon in left will bat seventh. Chet Lemon in center bats eighth. And Tom Brookins at third will bat ninth. Jack Morris in his 130 pitches on the mound for the Tigers. 
Defensively for the Angels, Brian Downing a seven and a three and left. How you doing, Tribe fan? Gary Pennis a nine and a nine in center. Rupert Jones an eight and a nine in right. Howell is a six at third. Dick Schofield is a seven at short. Dick lost his dad a couple days ago in real life. Bobby Gritch an eight at second. Rod Carew a four at first. Bob Boone. A six and an eight behind the plate, and McCaskill is a seven on the mound with a 927 fielding percentage. So with all that out of the way, Lou Whitaker steps in at 282, 19 homers, and 62 RBI. JT Dutch, how are you? Good to have you along. And Tribe fan says, just like the band Loverboy, everybody's working for the weekend. You can't have a piece of my heart, though. Pitch to Whittaker, and there's a fly ball to right. Jones coming in, one out. That's how this one starts. Here's Trammell, Allen at 275, 13 homers and 56 RBI. The Tigers, of course, the defending world champions, still have a shout in the American League East, but it's going to be a long road to hoe. The Red Sox really have over overperformed. And that's one of the reasons why. In the left field goes Trammell. Downing coming in. Two out. And that'll bring up Gibby. Gibson at 259. 18 homers. And 65 RBI. Casco winds and deals. And that's in the right field. Back goes Jones. Rupert makes the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Half an inning in the books. Tigers, nothing. Here come the Angels. I thought Whittaker finally got in. He should be in if he's not. Steeler fan, answer my question. Why or how could you be a Steeler fan in the Love You Blue area? I was in kindergarten during the 79 season. Just started following football. The 79 AFC Championship game was between Houston and Pittsburgh, of course. What Houston should have won, except for a bad call. One of my sisters sisters desperately wanted the Oilers to win. I got mad at her that morning, so I rooted for the Steelers. Ha, ha, ha! That's how I became a Red Sox fan. Honest to goodness, I grew you know, at that point, I was just about in kindergarten, a year younger than you. Trammell is in, but not Whitaker. Okay. And I grew up with a bunch of obnoxious Yankee fans. And so that's how I became a Red Sox fan. That's the God's honest truth, Matt. That's funny. Jack Morris is 10 and 14 with a 405 ERA. He is making his 28th start of the year. Seven left, including this one. 10 and 14 with an earned run average of 405, which JT Dutch is probably stuck on right now. Morris is 30. A fastball pitcher at 92 and a ground ball pitcher. Against the Angels, it's his third start. 16 in the third innings, 10 hits. Two runs, both earned. He walked eight, has walked eight, and struck out 17. But because Morris pitches to the score, he's 0-1 with an earned run average of 110, which for some of you takes you out to Pasadena. His last star came against the Royals on the 19th. A 3-2 win where he struck out 10. He went the distance through 137 pitches. Four hits. Two runs both earned. A homer. He walked to and struck out, as we said, 10. Morris leads the American League in strikeouts, by the way, with 177. He has thrown 208 and two-thirds innings. 186 hits, 102 runs, 94 earned, 13 homers. He has walked 111. Goodness gracious, Buffy St. Marie on that one. And that's why he is 10 and 14 with an earned run average of just over four. The lineup he'll face Gary Pennis leads off in center for California. Rod Carew is at first, he'll bat second. Brian Downing in left hits third. Rupert Jones cleans up in right. Reggie Jackson, the DH, will go fifth. Bobby Grinch in second will bat sixth. Howell at third goes seventh. Schofield at short batting eighth. 
Bob Boone behind the plate going ninth. McCaskill threw 15 pitches in his half of the first. J.T. Dutch comes from a family of Angels fans. My dad was an Angel fan from their inception in 61. You are the black sheep of the family as a Dodger fan. We get a lot of Dodger fans to watch. Or blue sheep. <laughs> I like that. Bad. Larry Herndon an eight and a four and left as we set the Tiger defense for you. Lemon is a seven and a four. Gibson a four and a five and right. Tom Brookins a five at third. Alan Trammell an eight at short. Lou Whittaker is an eight at second. Darrell Evans a three at first. Lance Parrish a six and a six behind the plate. And Jack Morris a five on the mound with a 926 fielding percentage. Pe Pettis at 281, no homers and 21 RBI. Infield playing back. Gary's going to square, drops it down, and they're not even going to bother a throw. Well, they do, but he beat it out. So Pettis leads off the game with a bunt single. So here's Carew, rod at 285, no homers, and 26 RBI. So I wonder, there must be a lot of people who become fans like Steeler fan or JT Dutch or myself of teams simply because other people in the family liked other teams and you dared to be different. Throw to first, Pettis is back. Carew can bunt, but we're not going to do it. Morris goes to the plate, and Carew draws the walk. So first and second, nobody out for Brian Downing. 262, 12 homers, and 58 RBI for Downing. How you doing, D. Scott Howard? Downing gets a ground ball to third. Brookins might get two here. Whittaker for one and Evans for two. So around the horn they go. Five, four, three, two out for Rupert Jones. Rupert at 220. 14 homers and 52 RBI. Of course, T. Scott Howard being from the Pacific Northwest made sense to be a Dodger fan because... They were the only team out there when he was growing up. Pitch to Jones. There's a ground ball to short. Trammell will throw across the way for the out, and that will retire the side. Mr. Howard watched yesterday's game on tape delay. He must be happy. Lance Parrish, by the way, will lead off the second. No runs, a hit, no errors. After one, no score. Parrish at 254. 19 homers and 73 RBI. JT Dutch was seduced by the Dodgers. Well, you know, Ben Scully will do that. For a lack of a better term, they were easy on the eyes. Their uniform, Dodger Stadium is beautiful and easy on the ears. Vin and Jerry. Jerry Doggett. Jerry should get the Frick Award, too. Jerry got his start in the majors under... Bad circumstances. Pitch to Parrish. And Parrish draws the walk. Connie Desmond was the Brooklyn Dodger third announcer, along with Red Barber and Vin Scully. Here's Evans. Daryl at 249, 23 homers, and 61 RBI. And Connie drank too much, to be honest. He was an alcoholic. And there were times that the Dodgers tried to, to dry, dry him out, and it didn't work. This is still when they were in Brooklyn. And so they called up their double-A or triple-A announcer, Jerry Doggett, from Oklahoma. It was their Texas League team. And so Jerry did a couple of weeks in Brooklyn in the booth. And by the 1956 season, Jerry was a permanent member of the team. And Ben and Jerry were a team, sometimes with Ross Porter, when Ben started to do some work at CBS, until Jerry's retirement in 1987. Pitch to Evans. Jones coming in. And that will be a catch in foul territory. It will not be a catch as foul. And the count is one and two. So Ben and Jerry worked a long time. And Jerry, the ever faithful second banana, 
Border joined in 77. I think you're right. 76 or 77. D. Scott Howard became a Dodger fan at the age of 11 while watching the 63 sweep of the Yankees. Have never wavered. And when the Dodgers moved out from Brooklyn, the 1 2 to Evans. There's a fly ball, right center field. Back goes Jones, but he's just going to be a spectator as it's 2 0 Detroit. Evans just smashed that one into the upper deck in right field. So McCaskill gives up his 18th gopher ball, and that's a 24th for Evans. He's three off the league lead. Evans just smashed it, you know, way deep indeed, Tribe fan. So two nothing Tigers. As we played the 24th of August. Yeah, Daryl Evans played with the Giants and the Braves to go with the Tigers. Is underrated. Where was I going with that story? I forget. I had a point. Nelson Simmons at 254, eight homers and 25 RBI. Anyway, so Doggett, Doggett really was just a great second banana. Oh, so when they moved out from Brooklyn to Los Angeles, Scully asked Walter O'Malley if they wanted to change their style. Now remember, Brooklyn pitched to Simmons televised most of their games, especially all the home ones, line out to Gritch for the first out. It brings up Herndon, 233, five homers and 27 RBI. And so it was customary for everyone to work solo. You'd work three innings on radio, three innings on television, yada, yada, yada. And so when they moved out to Los Angeles, the only games that were televised out there were the nine up in, or the, yeah, the 11 up in San Francisco. Or later, the nine out in San Francisco. They did not televise anything else until 1969. And so, did they want to go with Ben and Jerry being a, a broadcast team as far as both of them talking to each other at the same time? Do they become homers because it's a new team in Los Angeles? And O'Malley said, no, just do what you're doing. And so, that's why Ben and Jerry always broadcast separate not talking, stepping on each other. And, of course, that very neutral tone, although they both wanted the Dodgers to win. Pitch to Herndon. Larry hits a ground ball to Gritch. Bobby, a great play behind the bag over to first for the out two away. The dreaded Giants were the closest team, of course, but you adopted all the L.A. teams in the 60s. Yep. Lemon at 243, 12 homers and 47 RBI. Doggett's last game on television is on YouTube. It's too bad that broadcasters don't fly solo anymore. That's true. Although, as someone who does this for three or four hours a week, it's not always easy. And so, on Doggett's last game, they're down in San Diego for the Padres. And it's the only time I ever heard Vin have a color partner on a Dodger broadcast. And Vin just let Jerry tell stories, and Vin weaved in the play-by-play -play together as Jerry was Jerry. It was Jerry's day. Yep, Vin and Jerry worked together in that last game. It is on YouTube, or it was. So if you've never heard, you know, obviously Vinny, and yes, I know I sound a bit like Vinny, but there's some of Jerry Doggett's work on YouTube, and it's well worth finding. There we go. That's the end of the story. Pitch to Lemon. And Lemon gets hit. So McCaskill got him in the ribs on a 1-0 count. Then will bring up Brookins. Time at 255, four homers, and 37 RBI. So two out, and the Tigers have two in here in the inning. Brookins hits a ground ball to third. How a fantastic play. Diving stop goes to Gritch for the force, and that will retire the side. But Darrell Evans, his 24th of the year, puts the Tigers on the board. Two runs, a hit, and no errors. Inning and a half down, 2 nothing Detroit.
Steeler fan defending his Steelers. You know the only Oilers only lost four points on that alleged bad call about the lost, but they lost the game 27-13, right? I don't think it was a little closer at that at that point, but whatever makes you feel better. Earl Campbell had 17 carries for 15 yards. Campbell had always tough time against the Steelers. Houston wasn't winning on that day. Okay, oh, sure, Jim. Gardner's out walking the dog. Here's Reggie, 263, 23 homers and 67 RBI. And Reggie draws the walk. Here's Bobby Gritch, 255, 11 homers and 53 RBI. We said the Tigers need this one more than the Angels. Walked him. So Morris has walked three. You know, in 257 innings, he walked 110 in real life. So far, in 209 and two-thirds innings, he's walked 114. Here's Jack Howell, 243, five homers and 10 RBI. There's a line drive to center field, going to drop in front of Lemon. Reggie doesn't have a heck of a lot of speed, and he'll hold. So the Angels have the bases loaded for Schofield. Dick at 210, seven homers, and 38 RBI. As we said in the open, his father passed away in real life this week. Played for the Dodgers, among other teams. And was also a pretty good middle infielder in his own right. Pitch to Schofield. There's a ground ball to Whittaker. They might get two on. No, they're not going to get anything out of it. It's Whittaker made the bobble. Whittaker, to use a football turn, fumbled it. And it's 2-1. to one. There is still nobody out, and the base is loaded for Bob Boone. 228, three homers, and 30 RBI. So the walks have really stung Morris. Pitch to Boone. That's a fly ball left center field. Gritch should tag. Lemon has an average arm. Chet has it. Gritch goes back and will score without a throw. And we're tied at two with one out. Howell on second, Schofield on first. Had a single to start the ball game on a bunch single. So Morris ending in a third, 32 pitches is opening nine. Morris's ERA will be unharmed. Actually, it's 13 and a half. It's only one out. As ERA is now 411. So both of the runs are earned. He has walked three. Pitch to Pettis. Got him. He's check swing on a 94 mile an hour full count fastball. Two out. We'll see if it changes after Carew's at bat. Rod walked. More steals. In the left center. Lemon running in. And he'll make the catch. And that will retire the side. The error and the walks. Undo the lead. Two runs, a hit, and an error. The Angels have left on three so far. If you like ballerinas, well, everything's a 2 2. One run for Morris is earned now that you reconstruct the inning. So, Whittaker. Trammell and Gibson, McCaskill's opening, 9.43 pitches, two innings, the hit, one hit, the two-run shot from Evans, Ballerina or Chuck Woolery? I, 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 can I have the, um, can I put the, uh, the ceramic Dalmatian on a gift certificate, please? Deuce is wild. Two runs, two hits for the Angels, two runs, a hit, and an error for the Tigers. Whittaker, by the way, is 0 for 1. In the left, downing, going back, and that is caught. One out. Be back in a 2 and a 2. There you go. 
Alan Trammell is old for one. The pilot for Wheel of Fortune, by the way, is also on YouTube. It was named Shopper's Bazaar. And you, you got to see it to believe it. Trust me on that one. The Casco deals. Trammell in the left center field. Pettis ranging over. And he will make the catch. Two out for Gibson. Kurt 0 for 1. Two out top the third in a 2-2 game. Deuce is wild. Gibby in the right field. Jones will make the catch. And that will retire the side. Tigers go in order. Go to the bottom of the third inning, 2-2. Two -two. Gotta wonder if Vinny was a good poker player. So downing Jones and Jackson to face Morris. Brian grounded into a double play. Downing hits a ground ball to Whittaker over to first for the out. I remember Willery on Wheel of Fortune, of course. I never watched Love Connection. That just, like, no. He put ketchup on a stick. I won't go on a second date. But that just, you know, no. Rupert's 0 for 1. But Scrabble I liked. Foul back. And the count is 1 and 2. Now, that would have been funny, Tribe fan, if that had been 2 and 2. Tribe fan, of course, doing his replay on YouTube. Speaking of which, and appears with Rob with an exclamation point every once in a while, and Rob holds a chat. So if you want to see Tim, you can. There's a line drive in the right field. That's going to drop in front of Gibson. So the third hit for the Angels. Here's Reggie. He walked and scored in the second. JT Dutch. You see Vin being more of a bridge player. And just like Lady Gaga, you can't read Vinny's poker face. I don't think Vin shows him what he's got. D. Scott Howard said, My current dog sending victim, victim is named after a football player. His name is Riggins, but not John, who his owners had never heard of, okay? But a character from Friday Night Lights, who probably was named after Riggo, who you never heard of. The Diesel. Pitch to Reggie, the hot dog. That's in the right field. Gibby, the former quarterback, makes the catch. Michigan State. So now, Michigan State and USC or UCLA is going to be a Big Ten game. Oh, Eve. Here's Gritch. Bobby walked and scored. One of the three walks that Morris delivered in the second. Two out. Morris throws to first. Uh, good thing I didn't try and steal. Jones back. And Gritch strikes out. That's two for Jack. Swung on and miss, and that will retire the side. After three, no runs a hit, and the Angels leave on a runner. Detroit two, California two. So Parrish, Evans, and Simmons to face McCaskill here in the fourth. Lance walked and scored. It's the end of the sports world as we know it. Tribe fan says, and I feel fine. Or as Vinny would say, stand in the place that you live. Think about direction and wonder why you have it. Pitch to Parrish. There's a fly ball left center field. Back goes Pettis. Gary has good speed. One out. Of course, when you watch these on YouTube, you can't see the live chat on Twitch. And you must think that I'm... You know, 17 different shades of crazy. Here's Daryl Evans. He had his 24th of the year his last time up. 
Well, only two runs for the Tigers. If Riggins isn't the MVP of that Super Bowl, imagine a world where it's, it's David Woodley is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Well, we survived... We survived Trent Dilfer and his quarterback Super Bowl win. No, it's all the sports. They're going to the Big Ten. UCLA and USC. Tribe fan and I think alike. <laughs> Pitch to Evans. There's a fly ball to right field. It's David Woodley. And Don Strock was the backup. Here's Nelson Simmons, who's 0 for 1. Two out here in the fourth. Opposite way, downing, running around, down the line and left, and Brian will make the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. After three and a half, Tigers and Angels, time to two. And so here's a Dodger fan's favorite portion of their of the program. The Dodgers, of course, with uh, with 42 games to go, have a 16 and a half game lead over Houston. The Padres, despite winning 11 straight, they swept a doubleheader against the Mets, are 20 and a half out. In the East, no one really wants to win. In fact, the entire division took a goose egg on Friday. It's still nine and a half for St. Louis. In the West, Kansas City's won three straight. California won yesterday, so it's a game and a half. Chicago continues to play well. And somehow we're getting elimination numbers in the East, and so you can go to bed safely knowing that the Blue Jays' magic number in the American League East is 39. Rigged. I would think that you would feel pretty comfortable. Western Washington could definitely go into the next generation of the Pac-13. And Rex Grossman cost me $75 that Super Bowl. The Dodgers are pretty loaded. Defensively, they are not good. And since we were talking about the, the Redskins, they definitely were rigged. Here's Jack Howell. He singled his last time up. Struck him out. That's three for Morris. Swings and misses on the fastball. Fernando and Hershiser are having tremendous years. And the rest of that division has just pretty much laid a dozen eggs that you can find at Safeway. The Dodger fans are pretty loaded, too. I can think of a couple up in Washington that might be. Schofield has an RBI. He's 0 for 1. Morris deals. Popped up. Parrish. Will make the catch. Two out for Boone. Bob had him sack fly for an RBI. Morris winds and deals. In the right field. Gibson coming in. And that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the fifth. Angels and Tigers are tied at two. So Larry Herndon, Chet Lemon, and Tom Brookins to face McCaskill here in the fifth. Larry is 0 for 1. And there's a base hit. Pass Rich in front of Pettis. That 85 staff was pretty solid. Welch and Royce. And ERA's under three at the back of their rotation. Yes, that's true. For the longest time, here's Levin. Chet was hit by a pitch in the second. I would have made the Cardinals a pretty comfortable favorite in the upcoming LCS. I mean, they had the best record in baseball until recently. And Vince Coleman and the Tart Machine will not be having a date in Game 3. But I got to say, I, I think the Dod that series, and I think it'll come to that, with the Dodgers having home field, because we did it by division, not by record. Uh, 
I would make the Dodgers a favor. Pitch to Lemon. Here's a little looper that's going to get down in center field in front of Pettis, and that's a base hit. So Herndon will hold at second, Lemon on first. You know, this is our fourth replay season. Here's Brookins. He's 0 for 1. And considering that the Dodgers' lead is now 16 and a half, in all four seasons, the Dodgers have made the playoffs or will make the playoffs. Pitch to Brookins. Tom, it's a ground ball to Carew. Rod goes to second for one. Schofield throws back to Carew. Three, six, three. So two out. Runner to third for Whittaker, who was 0 for 2. McCaskill, 80, uh, 69 pitches through four and two thirds. 18 batters, three hits, the home run to Evans, and a walk. JT Judge says, I don't think there will ever be another ball club like that 85 Cardinal one. Only one guy hit over 15 homers, Jack Clark, and over 300 stolen bases. Yes, Action PC is a very accurate program. And if you're wondering why, for those of you who are new to the replays, we did 70, or we did 82 first. Dodgers won the West over Atlanta and San Francisco. In fact, I don't think that was even close. But they lost to the Expos and Steve Rogers, who went, I believe, 21 and 3. The Expos went on to beat the Orioles to win the World Series in six. And that was the year that the Nationals won the World Series in real life. Pitch to Whittaker. Lou, it's a ground ball to short. Schofield behind the bag at second. Whittaker running, and it gets away from Carew. So Herndon will score. 3-2. Whittaker will hold as Carew couldn't dig that one out. So Schofield gets charged with an error, and that's an unearned run. Brings up Trammell, who's 0 for 2. We next did 1978 during 2020, and the Dodgers won that World Series. They beat the Phillies in the NLCS, and then they beat the Texas Rangers. Yep, the, that Expos Championship banjo is hanging in the Bell Center. I still got that picture somewhere. The Rangers beat the Yankees in an amazing Game 5 of that ALCS where Bobby Bonds took Ron Guidry deep twice. And the Dodgers won that in five. Last year, we did 49, and the Yankees beat the Dodgers in the World Series in five games. But the Dodgers, whether Brooklyn or Los Angeles, have been the constant. So you'll have to recommend a season where the Dodgers don't contend for next year. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Pitch to Trammell. In the center field. Pettis going back. Gary is there. And that retires the side. Halfway home. The error is costly. The Tigers get a run on two hits. On a Thursday, it is Detroit 3, California 2. All right, join us late. Here's how he got here. Darrell Evans, a two-run shot in the second, his 24th of the year, makes it 2 nothing Tigers. Then the Angels tied it in the bottom of the inning. Dick Schofield with the fielder's choice to make it 2-1. to one. Then Bob Boone, a sack fly to tie the game at two. In the, th in the top of the fifth a moment ago, Lou Whittaker reaches on an error, which scored the go-ahead run. The Tigers are up. Three to two. Helps if I put the button in the right spot. Jack Morris, a three hitter through four, one earned run. And McCaskill, a three hitter through five, and one unearned run.
So as Gary Pettis steps in, Morris is opening 18 on 68 pitches. Four innings, three hits, one earned run. He has walked three and struck out three. The funny thing, JT, about that 49 World Series replay was I think one game we hit the exact score and we in all five games matched the real-life winners. And wouldn't it have been something if Fred Sanford, who was not a regular part of that Yankee rotation, and he took a no-hitter into the ninth inning of the deciding game of a World Series. I've never called a, a no-hitter. I've had two. They're playing in for the bunt. Pettis is going to strike out. He looked at a 1-2 curve for strike three. Brings up Carew, who's 0 for 1 with a walk. They were both Yankee pitchers, by the way. Catfish Hunter doing a College World Series type tournament for 1978 using Strategic Baseball Simulator. You guys ever re remember that? Pitch to Carew. Rod hits a fly ball to right. Gibson makes the catch for the out. Brings up Downing. Brian is 0 for 2. He is grounded into a double play. The other was an action PC no-hitter from 1964 thrown by Mr. Ball for himself, Jim Bouton. And I forget who he threw it against. The uh, Catfish Hunter no-no was thrown against the Phillies. In the right center, Lemon coming in makes the catch. And that will retire the side. Angels go down quietly in the fifth. Three, two, Tigers. So Gibson, Parrish, and Evans here in the sixth. McCaskill winds and deals. Here's a fly ball to right. Jones moves over. One out. Lance, by the way, has walked and scored. He's 0 for 1. Fountain was masterful in the 63 series, but got no run support. Jim, of course, best known for the book, was a pretty good pitcher in his own right. Ground ball to Howell. Long throw to first across the way for the out. In the actual 1980s, Jack Morris was considered one of the premier pitchers, but his stock has fallen. In yep. I think it's one of those things, Mr. Howard, that the way we look at stats changes that. I mean, Morris was the winningest pitcher of the decade. But he's probably, you know, as far as a perf game performance is concerned, best known for his 10 shutout innings in Game 7 of the 91 series. Evans smashed one in the second to upper right field. 24 now on the year. Line drive to Carew, and Rod's there. And that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom six, 3-2 Tigers. JT Touch says, I always felt Morris was overrated, the beneficiary of a consistently good offense. These Tigers were good. Someone on Facebook was trying to claim that the 84 team was overrated. 35 and, you know, they only went 14 games over 500 after that 35 and 5 start. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, Jan. Here's Rupert Jones, 1 for 2. Struck him out. That's five for Morris. A 2-2 fastball in the inside corner. Here's Reggie. He has walked and scored. He's 0 for 1. Ground ball to first. Evans takes it to the bag himself for the out. Here's Gritch. Bobby walked, struck out, and scored. He's 0 for 1. Base hit, left center field. Herndon will cut it off in the alley. And Gritch is held to a single. So only the fourth hit for California. And I'll bring up Jack Howell, who has singled and struck out. One for two. The 84 Tigers were amazing. They just put it all together. And no, oh, they, well, you know, they had a good year in 85. 
the Red Sox seemingly came out of nowhere in 86. And it, uh, the Tigers had a good stretch. I think people would think better of the 84 Tigers had the Twins. I mean, the Twins won that series in 87 thanks to the Metrodome. And with all that offense, it was Willie Hernandez, who not only was the Cy Young Award winner, but the MVP. Struck him out. That's six for Jack. And that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, and no errors. We go to 7-3-2 Detroit. So Nelson Simmons, Larry Hernan, and Chet Lemon to face McCaskill here. Nelson is 0 for 2. There's a fly ball right center field. Going to drop in front of Rupert Jones. And that's a hit. So on cue, the Tigers get a base runner. Fourth hit from the Tigers. Here's Herndon. Larry has singled and scored. D. Scott Howard was in the kingdom in 84 when the M somehow completed a three-game sweep. Wow! Of the Tigers against all odds. I'm happy to say that in that Tiger 35-5 and five run that two of those five losses came to the Boston Red Sox. Herndon in the right field. Here comes Jones. Make the catch. A great diving stop. Yes, JT, they won two of the three in Detroit. But the first two were in Minnesota. And I think the Tigers, who had had to come back. I mean, that was the year that Tony Fernandez broke a bone in Toronto playing the Tigers. And then they came down to the last weekend of the season. And the Tigers had all they could do to get past the Blue Jays to win the pennant. Daryl Evans with a home run the last day of the season was the difference. That they were a tired ball club. But yeah, I mean the twins the twins led to zip going back to Detroit. And yes, the eighty seven series was the first time ever that the home team won all seven games. Lemon single, he's one for one. In the left, Downing in the corner makes the catch. Now, can you tell me, as a trivia question, when was the first time that a road team won all seven games in a World Series? Here's Tom Brookins. Tom is 0 for 2 and is grounded into a double play. There's a base hit left field. Downing will pick it up. Simmons goes to third, and the throw goes in the infield. So first and third, two out here. Top of the seventh for Whitaker, who's 0 for 3. McCaskill opening 27, 97 pitches. Six and two-thirds, five hits. The home run to Evans, and two earned runs. He's walked one and not struck out anyone else. JT Dutch has it, 2019. The Nationals won the first two in Houston. Houston won all three in Washington. And then the Nats won game six and game seven on the road. I find it harder to believe that we went from 1903 to 1987 without the home team winning all seven games. Pitch to Whitaker. Runners on first and third. Ground ball to Carew. Rod takes it to the bag himself, and it's stretch time. Three, two, Tigers. Schofield, Boone, and Pettis to face Morris here in the 7th. Schofield is 0 for 2. 
Tigers have left on four. JT remembers in 86 being all road victories for the first four. Yeah, thank you. Red Sox won game five. You know, going into that series, I just won a one. Just won a one. I knew how good the Mets were. We just wanted one. And by the time that week was over, it was just one more. Pitch to Schofield. There's a ground ball to Whittaker. Lou almost on the grass throws to first, and Dick's retired. But as Matt would tell you, and RJL would tell you, if somehow the Astros win game six against the Mets and maybe one of the greatest playoff games ever, here's Boone. Bob has an RBI, his own for one. To a man. The 86 Mets would tell you that they weren't beating Mike Scott in Game 7. Pitch to Boone. There's a line drive to second. Whittaker is there. I think that was Game 4. Game 5 was where they... Darryl. Darryl. There's Pettis. That's where that... began. I think it was Game 4. Gary is one for three. He has singled and struck out twice. In that great episode of The Simpsons, Homer, Homer at the Bat, they chant that in one of the games, in the softball games, and Strawberry's character cries. I thought that was great. Pitch to Pettis. Gary hits a ground ball to Whittaker over to Evans for the out. So 28 batters deep. Well, we'll tell you about that in the eighth inning. After seven full, no runs, no hits, no errors. Tiger three, eight, uh, California two. So Trammell, Gibson, and Parrish to face McCaskill, who's just had 100 pitches. Allen is 0 for three. Of course, Scott would have, gums, would have won game seven. English is a new language for me of that NLCS. He had so much free real estate in the Mets' heads. Was it just the bets? Pitch to Trammell. Fly ball left field. Downing makes the catch for the out. Can you imagine game one of the World Series would have been Bruce Hurst and Nolan Ryan at the Astrodome? Then you would have had Clemens. I don't know if they would have gone with Scott. Clemens pitched Game 7 against the Angels. Here's Gibby. He's 0 for 3. Base hit right field. Anyone else lose the sound? Hello? Let's see. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Hello? Hello? No, I still got it. Here's Parrish. She's 0 for 2. A run scored and a walk. Gibby on first. One out, eighth inning. Throw to first. Kirk is back. The Caskill deals. Parrish, it's a liner in the left field. That's going to drop in front of Downing for a hit. Gibson on second, Parrish on first. For Evans, who was one for three in his 24th in the second. Excuse me, a two run job. Clemens versus Deshaies? Well, remember, Clemens pitched on that Thursday in Boston to go to the World Series. Ah! The Bluetooth bumped the speaker. So, no, it was a Wednesday. So, yeah, probably to Shays. And said you got Clemens and Gooden. And Evans draws a walk. For this 14-year-old kid, that was that was just pure, pure porn. Yeah. No, I mean, 
you're right, I think, because that was a Wednesday. So Clemens pitched on that Wednesday. Like it matters. Clemens pitched on that Wednesday in Game 7. So the bases are loaded here for Nelson Simmons, who's one for three. And you're right. Scott would have pitched Thursday against the Mets. And so, yeah, you probably would have been Deshaies. Because I can't imagine they would have held Ryan for Game 2. Boone and McCaskill have a word. Kirk delivers. They're loaded. And it gets away from Boone, and everybody moves up 90. So Gibson scores. Parrish to third, Evans to second. And there's a 3-0 count to Simmons and just one out. And so McCaskill is pretty much on E. and might as well throw the fourth ball, and he does. And Simmons is out. Alejandro Sanchez is going to pinch run. And so with one out, we're looking at the average in the outcome box, and we're going to leave McCaskill in to face Herndon. Larry, one for three. He has singled and scored. That's true. Can you imagine the Mets going down to the LCS after winning 108 games? Into it? Yeah. That was not a team of shrinking violets, JT Dutch. And I'm sure you and D. Scott Howard... Still get some chuckles on the 88 LCS. Pitch to Herndon. And there's a line drive to Gritch. And everyone's got a scamper back. So there's two out for Lemon, who is one for two. Chet has a single. McCaskill deals. In the left center, they're going to leave him loaded. How about that? Pettis runs over, makes the catch, and that's the inning. Dave Bergman coming into play first. Really? Sanchez stays in the game as the DH. We go to the bottom of the eighth. No One run, two hits, and no errors. Tigers four, Angels two. So Carew, Downing, and Jones to face Morris here in the eighth. Rod is 0 for 2 with a walk. Morris deals. And Carew draws the walk. So he walked in the first and walks in the eighth. And that'll bring up Brian Downing, who is 0 for 3. He has grounded into a double play. Bergman and Brookins guard the lines. Bergman and eight at first. JT says, I don't know how they beat the Mets in 88. I don't either. I mean, I saw it, know how they did it, but I still can't believe it. Yeah, the Mets should have, the Mets were the best team in baseball in 88. No, that was a dynasty team. If Pendleton doesn't homer late in the 87 season in St. Louis, the Mets, I think, win three straight. Or certainly repeat in 87. Base hit in the center field. Lemon will pick it up. Carew will hold at second. Downing on first. Trammell. Misplays it. Here's Rupert Jones, who is one for three. Nobody out. They're playing for the bunt. And they will oblige. Parrish and Morris try to get on the same page. Jack deals. Rupert squares. It's down. And the only play is to Whittaker at first. And so it's second and third. With one out. And one Reginald Martinez Jackson. He already had a big home run on this channel this week. Do they walk him for Gritch? Morris has walked four and struck out six. They'll pitch to Jackson. Reggie hits a base hit in the right field. Carew was run number three. Gibson picks it up. Downing rounds third and scores, and Reggie has delivered. Hot dog. Here comes Willie Hernandez. And this game is tied at four. They have knocked out Jack Morris. 
So this is a win situation. Potentially, actually, the runner on first belongs to Morris. For Hernandez, it's his 54th appearance. It's not even October. Yet yeah, twice this week, Jackson has won ball, has made the difference. So Hernandez, 3-3 three and three with 29 saves and an earned run average 176. He is 31 years old. A fastball at 87 and a fly ball pitcher. Against the Angels, it's his third appearance. He is one and all. Two and two-thirds innings, two hits, a run it was earned. He has walked one while striking out four. He pitched two days ago up in Oakland and taking and blowing a save in a 3-2 loss. One inning, 30 pitches, three hits, two runs, both earned a homer. He walked two and struck out three. So in 76 and two-thirds, he's given up 59 hits, 16 runs, 15 earned, five homers, walking 14, and striking out 61. GT Dutch says, and I laugh, D. Scott Howard didn't follow me? Are you kidding? Really? You didn't follow the channel? Anyway, Hernandez, 31, fly ball pitcher and a fastball pitcher at 87. So Jackson is Morris's. Gritch is Hernandez. Is Bobby is one for two. He has single scored, walked, and struck out. And yep, Morris pitched it to score again. Steeler fan says, Matt says, unbelievably, I discerned the difference between a automatic double and a ground rule double. I never, so what's the difference? What is an automatic double? Pitch to Gritch in the left center. That's a little looper that Lemon will come in, squeezes the glove. And Reggie goes back to first. So two out for Howell, who will be pinch hit for as we play who can hit a lefty. Uh-oh, there's too bad that Todd B's not here. Look who the look who the Angels have. Well, it's Juan Beniquez. Juan at 280, seven homers. And 34 RBI. As a pinch hitter, he's hitting 714. So Reggie on first. Two out, bottom of the eighth, and a 4 4 tie. In the right, Gibson will get there. And we go to the ninth, a cardiac special. It's the Tigers four and the Angels four. So McCaskill says, I want to face Brookins. Tom is one for three. He has singled and grounded into a double play. And so Mark says, I'll give you the base runner. Four runs, seven hits, an error for the Tigers. And they've left on seven as we start the ninth inning. The Angels, four runs, six hits, an error, and they've left on six. Somehow when he came back from vacation, I wasn't following you. Oh, okay. Matt says if the ball bounces over the fence, it's an automatic double. If something specific to the ballpark causes it stuck in the fence, oh, okay. So it's a ground rule thing, but it must be standard as opposed to a ballpark ground rule. The game insists I have nine fielders. So Doug DeSensei, who was a five at third, comes in and he will bat in the seven hole. So Brookins, one for three. And Brookins is going to be pinch hit for. Johnny Grubb comes in. McCaskill looks. Gene says you're fine. Grubb at 286 and two pinch hit home runs. Overall, 214, four homers, and 10 RBI. McCaskill winds and deals. Line drive to Schofield. He leaps and makes the catch one out. And that'll do it. It'll be 
Al Holland, who is over from the Phillies, to come in with one out in the ninth and a 4-4 tie, making his ninth appearance of the month of August. He came over from Philadelphia on August 2nd. He is 2-1 with the Angels with a 3.09 ERA. And at 33, he is an extreme fly ball pitcher, and the fastball tops out at 87. He faced the Yankees two days ago in a 7-5 loss, no decision, 22 pitches, a walk, and a strikeout. So since coming over from Philadelphia, 11 and two thirds, 11 hits, six runs, four earned. The one home run came against the Twins. He walked four while striking out nine. Apparently, Matt's been playing MLB The Show as he has been hurting cats all week. And he keeps saying automatic double. Huh. Lou is 0 for 4. Nobody on. One out. Ninth inning. Pitch to Whittaker. In the right. Jones running back there. Makes the catch in the corner. Two out. Donnie Moore can pitch. He threw 19 pitches in yesterday's game. Traveled all the way 0 for 4. But they wanted the lefties for Whittaker and Gibson. In the left. Downing. Going back. It's a loud out, but it's an out. And down go the Tigers. No runs, no hits, no errors. It'll be Schofield, Boone, and Pettis to face Hernandez here in the ninth. So, free baseball coming up. 4-4 four, four the score. Willie winds and deals. Line drive to Whittaker, who leaps and makes the catch one out. And that'll bring up Boone. Bob is over two with an RBI. Is Mike Brown available? No. Gerber, Naren, Wilfong, and George Hendrick. Hernandez deals. Boone laces one in the center. And so Bob is the winning run. And Craig Gerber is going to pinch run. Yeah, he's with Pittsburgh. So Jerry Naren would catch if the game goes extra. Here's Pettis. Gary, not a great hitter. But he can bunt, and that's what he's going to do. One for four. He has struck out twice. He throws to first, does Hernandez. Pettis squares. And nobody moves for the Tigers. Gerber is back. Pettis puts the bunt down. Parrish throws to first. Whitaker covers. And the winning run is in scoring position for Rod Carew. Now... Carew is not a good hitter against lefties. But neither is anyone else that's left. Naren is a 143 hitter. Wilfong is a 143 hitter. And Hendrick is a 129 hitter. So Carew with first base open and downing on deck will get the call to win this ballgame. So a single will win it for California. Carew is 0 for 2. He has walked twice and scored. Hernandez deals, and it's popped up. Carmen Castillo, the third baseman, moves over into foul territory, and that hits the top of the dugout. So a reprieve from the governor. By the way, Castillo was a 7 at third. Bergman is an eight at first. And the count to Carew is one and two. Hernandez deals. Strike three. So we're going extra. No runs, a hit, and they leave the tying the winning run on second. 
you want to talk about symmetry, four runs, seven hits, an error, and everybody's left on seven. And no one's getting fat except Mama Cass. Free baseball for you. We go to the 10th, 4-4. Oh, Marty Castillo. Okay. Well, he'll bat ninth. You're right. Carmen is in Cleveland, and Carmen Miranda's on your Chiquita banana. Kurt Gibson is one for four as we start the tenth. He has singled and scored. Holland deals, and there's a fly ball to center field. Pettis moves over. One out. Lance Parrish, who's one for three. He has singled, walked, and scored. Now, speaking of things that you might not have known, do you know the technical name for the regular season in Major League Baseball? Yeah, they don't dance like Carmen anymore. You know, her heart attack, her fatal heart attack was actually televised. Parrish in the left. Back goes Downing. Way back there. And Lance is giving the Tigers a 5-4 lead. Yes, JT Dutch, it is the championship season. So Parrish is his 20th home run. And Hernandez is in line for the win. So Holland gives up the home run, and it's 5-4 Detroit. So let's see what Sparky does with Dave Bergman here, lefty versus lefty. Parrish hits one to Fullerton off the corpse of Al Holland. No, the, that corpse is John Denny, who was 1-19 in this replay. Bergman stays in the game in the shallow center. Pettis rides the Schwinn for the out. Two away for Alejandro Sanchez. He pinch ran earlier. 176, a homer. And five RBI. And just for completion's sake, it is indeed Marty Castillo. JT Dutch has watched too many of my streams. But yeah, it's technically the regular season in Major League Baseball is the championship season. Yep, Alejandro did not walk in 1985. Didn't draw one. If this wasn't a late season game, I'd just walk him for grins and giggles, but can't do it. Sanchez, line drive to third. DeSensei makes the catch, and that will retire the side. JT did too many 85 replays. Who won your series? I bet the Cardinals did really well. One run, however, the home run by Parrish, the difference... His solo shot makes it 5-4 Detroit. So downing Jones and Jackson was the reason why we're still here. Brian, one for four, has singled, scored, and grounded into a double play. Willie starts the 10th with a ground ball to Bergman. Dave takes it to the bag, one out. So we'll be back with you Tuesday for a full week of baseball. Here's Rupert Jones, and again, there really isn't anyone that can hit. They will bring in George Hendrick, who started his year with the Pirates. And for Todd B., who's going to miss being here, Hendrick has came over on the 2nd of August. He only played 16 games. So Hernandez to face Hendrick and huge advantage Willie. 
However, if Hendrick can make contact, it's a tie game. He makes contact, but that will stay in the yard. Lemon will make the catch, and it's down to Reggie Jackson in the last chance saloon. And the Angels need to activate Bobby Knopper, Jimmy Reese. Isn't Jimmy the first base coach? Reggie is one for three. It was his single in the ninth that tied, or in the eighth that tied this game at four. And so Hernandez, one out away from going four and three. And he does, as Reggie swings at one out of the zone for strike three. And the Tigers have won this one by the score of five to four. So that's the right way to end the week. Five runs, eight hits, and error for the Tigers. They leave on... Well, now i got to find it. Seven. The Angels, who fall to 64 and 59, four runs, seven hits, and error, and they leave on seven. Lance Parrish in his home run in the 10th is going to get you the Digital Advice MVP. Willie Hernandez wins it, two and two-thirds of scoreless relief for two strikeouts. Al Holland goes to two and two. That solo shot the difference. Reese was a beloved co old coach who hit fungos all day and used to room with Babe Ruth's suitcase. Wow. McCaskill had minus, minus stuff and still pitched well. Now, I'm supposed to tape digital dice. I didn't need to go 18 today. So, the Royals' lead now is two. And the Tigers are technically tied with the Yankees. Seven back. So as we play the games of this Saturday, the 24th, we can tell you the Red Sox beat the Twins 4-3. to Bruce Hurst goes to 8-10. and Mike Smith's in the 8-12. And, and by God, Bob Stanley got a save. His 12th. Reds beat the Cubs 9-7. to Mario Soto 9-11. Mr. Trout goes to 4-8. Keith Moreland, three for five, a seventh of the year in a losing cause, and drives in two. Oakland, be speaking of long games, Oakland beats Baltimore in 15, three to two. Steve Onavero is five and two. Snell, two and two. Fred Lynn, three for six, and he hits his 17th. Bob Forch gets the win. The Cardinals beat the Braves 10 to four. Rick Cant falls to five and four. Dale Murphy, two for three, is 33rd of the year, drives in two. Mike Kruko goes to 12 and nine as the Giants beat the Phillies two to one. Charlie Hudson, four and 12. Joe Youngblood, two for four, is third of the year. Mets snap the long winning streak of the Padres. It's done in 11. Ron Darling beats him six to four. He goes to 10 and 10. Dave Dravecki, eight and 13. Gary Templeton, three for five, and a double. The Dodgers beat the Expos in 11, 6 to 5. Tom Needenfewer, 3 and 1. Jeff Reardon, 5 and 3. Mike Marshall, 2 for 3, is 21st of the year and drives in 3. Tom Seaver, I think that's his 300th. Did he need 12? Yeah, JT, come along for the ride. September's coming. So Seaver beats the Blue Jays to go 12 and 9. He beats Dave Steve. George Bell, three for five, his 23rd of the year, and a double. Texas beats Kansas City in 10, so California loses no ground. Greg Harris, six and three. Dan Quisenberry is seven and eight. And if the Royals do win the division, Quisenberry is a huge question mark for what the Royals' chances are. Willie Wilson, two for five with a triple. The Mariners walk 10 times. They beat the Yankees 6-5. Nunez goes to 2-4. and four. Dave Rigetti, 4-5. and five. Storman Gorman Thomas, 3-4, for four, is 20th of the year, and drives in 4. So as we leave you for the week, St. Louis 10.5 over Montreal. The Dodgers 17 over Houston. Toronto by 2 over Boston. And the Angels are a game and a half behind the Royals. And so next week, we will have for you the Cardinals and the Reds. Is that going to stay in the calendar? 
it's going to stay in the calendar because that is a poopy selection of games. Houston and St. Louis. So if you're a Cardinal fan or an Astro fan, you got yourselves a game. And then the last one, California and the Yankees. So that's that. And then Labor Day doubleheader. We're doing a game Sunday? We're not. Uh, Montreal and Los Angeles is one game. And right now, we'll squeeze out Oakland and Baltimore. And we'll go with... California and Detroit. So you get the Astros, you get the Dodgers, you get a whole bunch of teams next week. Until then, I'm Ron Jucket. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you the next time.